we're going to figure out the electric field that exists at a point uh, from two uh, equal positive charges. Specifically, we have our two positive charges. We'll call this one positive charge one, this one positive charge two. And we're going to figure out the electric field that is located at a distance y from both point charges like this. We're going to define A as the distance, as half the distance between the two point charges. We're going to figure out the electric field at this point. So we're figuring out the electric field specifically at this point caused by these two positive charges. So just talk to me to begin with about what you see having to do with the electric field at this point caused by these two point charges, point charge one and two. Bailey. Anything. Give me anything. What, what do you think, for example, what do you think the direction is of the electric field at this point caused by charge one? All right, well, I'll, I'll try this differently. Okay, class. We'll go a different route, sorry. Class, get out your hand. You're gonna point, okay, ready? You're gonna point in the direction of the electric field at this point caused by charge one. Okay. It's going to be <laughs> in that direction, right? What is the direction of the electric field caused by charge two at this point? Please point. Okay, good. Now, what is the direction of the net electric field due to both of them? going to be straight up. Okay. So you should be able to look at this and know that right now. We're going to go through and figure out what the actual values are and show, show exactly how to get there. But you should be able to identify that electric field 1 is there and electric field 2 is there. And that the net electric field is going to be in the y direction because the x components of the electric field total cancel out due to symmetry. So the electric field total then is going to be equal to the electric field 1 in the y direction plus the electric field 2 in the y direction. Because the electric field total in the x direction as we said, is equal to electric field 1 in the x direction minus the electric field 2 in the x direction, which equals 0, because those two are going to be the same. All right. So we need, which is going to be equal to 2 times the electric field in the y direction. Because the electric field due to 1 in the y direction and electric field 2 in the y direction are both going to be the same. So we need the electric field in the y direction. So, we're given A and Y. True. So we can use general shape. Yeah, true. We've got, let's just do it with this one, electric field one. We've got electric field one in the x direction, electric field one in the y direction. Help me figure out what electric field one is equal to then. I'm sorry, electric field one y. What? Uh, well, you know the angle theta. Okay, we'll call this theta, and that is also going to be theta. True. So you can have a uh, cosine equals opposite over adjacent, or adjacent over hypotenuse. Which is going to be E1Y over E1. And then remove the 
help him out. He, 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 this, this, I, I go over this like the second day in, in college prep physics, and it comes back to haunt you sometimes. Jenkins, he didn't do cosine theta. You forgot. <laughs> With, if you don't have theta, you don't have any, you can't do it. Cosine of theta, don't forget the theta. So cosine of theta equals E1 Y over E1. Therefore, E1 in the Y direction equals E1 times a cosine of theta. So we have then uh, the electric field total, which I'll bring up here, is equal to uh, two times E1 times a cosine of theta. Okay. Um, electric field, yes, James. Are we assuming we know theta now? Uh, we yeah. actually don't know theta. Right. We know y and we know a. Yeah, so we find theta by using tan theta equals absolute. Okay, so we can go through and we can say tangent of theta equals, Jenkins, what? Tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite is? A adjacent is one. So we know theta is equal to the inverse tangent of negative inverse tangent of A over Y. Which unfortunately I, I isn't going to help us out a whole lot because we don't really know the values of A and Y. Right? Well, I, I'm sorry, we right, we know those values, but like this doesn't help me figure out how to work with it. This unfortunately we need it, right? Well, we're gonna do it a different way. That's fine. <laughs> At a moment. We know, just to pull out cosine of theta, which is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. What's adjacent to theta? Y. Y. What's the hypotenuse? We can say that the hypotenuse squared is equal to a squared plus y squared. In other words, the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of a squared plus y squared. And that is a little bit easier to work with. We have the square root of a squared plus y squared. So we can substitute the cosine of theta, or y over the square root of a squared plus y squared, in here. And we need the equation for electric field one. Emily? Just be Q times E. Ah, but we don't know the, we, I'm sorry, say that again? Q times E. Q times E, that would be the electric force. You're confusing the two, so you you said that it's equal to Q times E, but that's the electric oh, okay. force. Oh, so it's KQ over R squared. Remember, the electric field around a point charge is KQ over R squared. So in this particular case, it's going to be K times the charge Q divided by R squared, multiplied by the cosine theta, which is Y divided by the square root of A squared plus Y squared. What is R squared? Yes, stress? R squared is H squared. Is H squared, right? So it's A squared plus Y squared. So we have 2 times K times Q divided by A squared plus Y squared multiplied by Y divided by the square root of A squared plus Y squared. So what's the quantity A squared plus Y squared multiplied by the square root of A squared plus Y squared? A squared plus Y squared to the 3 halves power. So the electric field total is equal to 2 times K times Q times Y divided by A squared plus Y squared raised to the 3 halves power. And that is our answer. Oh, and we know the direction. We know it's in the positive J direction. Okay, that is our answer. And we're gonna now talk about a, an approximation. So what if Y is much, much greater than A? And this is something we're gonna do quite a bit in this class, which is to approximate things. So if Y is much, much greater than A, then A squared plus Y squared is approximately equal to what? Uh, Jake? Y squared. Y squared. 
So if that's true, the electric field total then would be equal to 2kqy divided by y squared to the 3 halves power. What is y squared to the 3 halves power, Ms. Dazel? y to the third power. So we get 2kqy divided by y to the third power. So y actually cancels out, and we get 2kq over y squared. I want to know why that makes sense as an answer. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll learn the correct dimension. I agree the dimensions are correct, but I, I want a little bit more than that. You should. That's okay. So, if A is really small compared to Y, then it's just like two point charges in the same place, and it's just one. If Y is much, much greater than A, then it's like having two point charges, as you said, pretty much in the same spot. So, notice this is two times the equation for one point charge. Okay? So, as you get farther and farther away from these two point charges, the fact that they're a distance apart starts to matter less and less. To put some numbers on that, if we were to say, for example, that A was equal to 1.0 centimeters, Y is equal to 1.0 meters, and Q is equal to 2.00 microcoulombs, the electric field total is going to be equal to 2 times 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times Q. Q is what then, Nick? Good, times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, divided by y, which is just 1 squared. Um, 35,960. 35,960. 35,960 or 3, uh, 36. 36 what? What would the dimensions on that be? 36 what? If you want to wager a guess, you raise your hand. What are the dimensions on it going to be? Travis? 36 millinewtons per coulomb. No. Close though. Wrong direction. Yeah. So no, it's kilo. Kilo newtons per coulomb. Kilo newtons per coulomb. Okay. If you do not use, if instead, just a second, go ahead. If instead you use this equation right here, you get uh, a, an error, a relative error that works out to be 0.015%. If you were to use this equation instead of this equation, so in this particular case, I would, would I think you would agree that 0.015% uh, error is pretty good, considering it's just 100 times greater. So it's a good approximation in that particular case. Mo, um, if they don't give you y and a, how do you know y is much much greater than a? Uh, I would say that over time, uh, it's a typical typical question right now. Over time, it will become more and more obvious. In this particular case, it's 100 times greater, which I would say is much, much greater. Usually, we try to make it pretty clear in that you know this one is much greater than that. And we'll also get to the point where it's we've done it enough where it's a little more obvious. The first time we do it like this, it's not. All right, since after you have the numbers. What I mean is, as we go through it, you'll you'll get a better sense of. So of he's saying that you don't know what a or y. Right. Well, you wrote that before you put the numbers in. Ah, I, I understand the question. Um, it's it's going to be a question. Like we could say, you know, figure it out, assuming that these are not, and then assume that they are, and we'll talk about the difference between the two. It, give it some time. It'll be. It'll be fine. 